uh, introducing myself. My name is Ethan Hansen. Um, I'm the president of the Orchard Club here at Cape Cod Community College. Um, it's for starters, right there. we are led uh, by President John Cox, and VP Rodriguez, uh, VP Christopher Clark, along with many others who have been a part of this journey uh, with me and with Orchard Club. Um, so. You know, last night when I was thinking about what I wanted to say for this, um, I, you know, usually when I give a presentation or something, I'll write a speech or, um, you know, kind of come up with the whole thing beforehand. But what I did here was I just took a, a bunch of notes of kind of how this whole project started, um, some key figures in the growth of it. Um, and I just want to walk it through you guys, give you guys the whole picture of what this orchard is that we planted today. So, you know, I, I often get the recognition of being the guy who had the idea for this orchard, and I can't actually claim that because the original idea was actually my father's. Um, it was probably March or April of last year. I had just come in to uh, the position of president of PTK, and uh, I was told that they were doing some type of project with uh, something about sustainability, reduce, reuse, recycle. That was the idea. So I was talking to my dad about it and he had the idea. He just kind of threw it out in conversation. Like, oh, why don't you uh, contact your cousin Richard? My cousin Richard, who is uh, the founder and program manager of Retree Us, who is responsible for bringing the trees here today, along with his sister Shelly. Um, but that was just it. It just started as kind of like, you know, late night conversation. Wasn't, uh, didn't really take it seriously at first, but started thinking about it. The seed was planted, so to speak. Um, and I remember calling Richard a couple of days later and pitched the idea to him and we started talking about the uh you know like what it what the the actual process would look like and i remember at some point in the conversation he's like you know what if you can get permission like we'll make it happen and i was like all right so uh from there it became a goal um and this was the end of last year and we all remember what april may was like last year it was absolute craziness and i just remember the idea of bringing an orchard just amidst all the chaos it just sounded like a really good thing and um, so I held on to it I, uh, I brought it to my advisor uh, professor Kate Martin and I remember talking to her about it and at the time she was still the advisor of PTK and you know I remember her telling me like yeah this you know th this this is what this will be an uphill um, not battle but this would be difficult but it's definitely doable and she gave me some guidance as far as how to start this process and you know who to talk to and how to go about it and uh, so from there, we're, we're now in the midst of the summer of last year, and I had just gotten into this position. I had never taken any sort of leader posi posi uh, leadership position in my life, and now I'm the president of PTK, and I had a bunch of new officers with me who also had never taken on a leadership position. So I, we reached out to each other over the summer, and we're like, hey, before the school year starts, like, you know, let's let's meet each other. We, we all met on Zoom. It was uh, myself, Cassie, Wilson, Natalia, and uh, Derek. And we met a couple times over the summer and I pitched the idea to them. I'm like, hey, let's play an orchard. And they were like, sounds good, let's do it. And uh, they immediately met with a lot of enthusiasm and we started just kind of brainstorming what that would actually look like, what we had to do, you know, who to talk to. Uh, and it was still just an idea. It wasn't anything like tangible yet. In the last week of summer, I met um, Professor Rebecca Griffin, who is the current PTK advisor here at Four Seas. And I pitched the idea to her, and she was super enthusiastic about it, um, as we all were at that point. And we hit the ground running. Um, I remember in September of last year, we had come up with kind of a timeline of what we wanted to do. And the plan was to uh, pitch the idea to the college by the end of September. And that month of September was crazy. We, we spent, you know, obviously coming back, we're all getting used to this virtual, um, schooling um, that none of us it was, I mean still weird for all of us right and um, so we spent a lot of time and I remember there it was again that just that really that core group of uh, students who were there in PTK and Rebecca Griffin and we, uh, we we I mean we went for it and we spent we, we spent hours like every every week we would just we would go and go and go and I remember this one day we spent uh, the whole meeting just trying to come up with a research question. Like we had like met with, uh, we had talked to Retree us, we, we, we'd kind of gotten all the things going. That was the last piece. Like if we could really, you know, come up with like, why would we do this? Uh, or why do we want to do this? And, and we came up with that question. And the question was, during a time of environmental crisis, what would be the impact of planting more trees? 
And that was the question. I remember when we asked ourselves that, we're like, I'm curious, I wanna know the answer to that. From there, we applied for a grant through PTK for $500. And that was the, um, basically the small fee we had to give to get the ball rolling. We reached out to, we filed out our um, application with Retrius, we got it in. And uh, the last piece that was missing was we had to have a Retrius contact person. So first person I went to was Professor Kelly Gates, philosophy professor here at Cape Cod Community College. And again, was immediately met with much enthusiasm uh, for this project, just like everyone else. And so the stage was set. We had all, we had done all the groundwork. You know, we had um, found someone willing to give us the trees. We had the contact person, we had the grant, and we had the research question. Uh, so we put it together. And on September 30th of last year, remember, the end of September was our due date. It was the last day of September. We, um, we were able to call a meeting with uh, President John Cox, VP Rodriguez, Joe McKinnon, and uh, Christopher Clark. Um, we gave that presentation. And we came out here and we walked around. We discussed the logistics of this whole operation. Um, you know, things that could go wrong, things that could go right, like uphill battles, whatever. And uh, we got permission that day. And I remember, um, I remember in that moment, it became real. This whole, this whole project became real. In the following weeks, I uh, worked closely with uh, Christopher Clark and Joe McKinnon. We met here a couple times. We walked around and we bounced around from location to location, seeing where we could actually make this happen. Uh, shortly thereafter, we got involved with, uh, I met Steve Zazura, who, uh, where's Steve? Steve has been a pillar of this project. Um, and yeah, let's give Steve a round of applause because when when I got introduced to Steve and he got involved in this project, this thing really started to snowball. And a lot of those obstacles started to become solved quicker and quicker. And he really was the contact person between the Orchard Club and Four Seas, um, doing a lot of the back behind the scenes work. So thank you, Steve. I just want to give him a very special uh, recognition. And uh, so we got our location approved. And oddly enough, you know, we had bounced around with between locations and this was the original spot that we wanted this to go. Um, and we had to, you know, we kind of found out some other places and this is where we landed on. Then we started reaching out to members of our community. Because one thing that was really important to us early on was that we didn't just want this to be a PTK project or even a Four C's project or a student project. We wanted this to be a community project. We really wanted this to be something that brought people together. Um, especially during just the, the crazy times that was 2020. Uh, we reached out to Josh Weil of Agway. And Josh today, unfortunately, he's not here right now, but he was here at 9 o'clock this morning um, bringing the compost. We asked for 36 bags of compost. He brought 43, which gave us a whole pallet. Um, Coast of Maine, premium stuff. And uh, we also reached out to Jimmy Baskin of Brewster Ace Hardware. Um, and he was donated all the tools that we will now be keeping here to um, handle the ongoing maintenance of this orchard. We also reached out to Heather Bishop, Project Forward. Um, and they are going to be helping us with the ongoing maintenance. Uh, they are very, very excited to be involved and we're very excited to have them involved. And the, again, the reason I'm, I'm being so specific with, with names and all the people is because that's really what was the heartbeat of this whole project, was the people, right? The students, the, the staff, the faculty, the business owners, everyone who came and just in some way, just in some way wanted to help. And there was, and I, I'm, I'm not even going to be able to name everybody in this presentation, but there were so many people that made this happen. There were so many people today that made this happen. So now we're in the middle of last semester and taking an ethics class. I'm a philosophy student for the of you that don't know. And uh, now there was a group of us in there. Um, I just, you know, we had just gotten permission to do this and we had the idea of starting the Orchard Club. What the Orchard Club was gonna be would be the entity responsible for really caring for this, for this orchard. Um, we wanted it to be a student-based program. We wanted the students to be, the student, you know, this whole thing came out of just students passion for trying to work together and make the earth a little better right take care of mother earth and in doing so build our community so the orchard club started um, in the very beginning it was myself i had asked professor 
Kelly Gates who's already involved in the project to be the advisor, Amber Olson, uh, Savannah O'Brien, Michael Pompey, Max Kennedy, Josh Maloney who is the president of the um, Veterans Club who has been a huge help and collaborator in this whole project and also Ben Jackson and there's been others who have gotten involved since um, there was many new members who were here today for the first time getting involved in this project but in the beginning that's who it was it was just a small group of us just trying to bring this forward from there things really started to snowball and um, I remember la ending last semester and we had You know, it really is, it's crazy. We um, we went into winter break and it was almost like, you know, we, we had set everything up so that, you know, come spring, like we could really get this ball rolling. Um, and there was so much of the um, sort of paperwork and the, the, the logistics that had to go into this. And right when this semester started, we, we all hit the ground running. And that was, <sighs> the amount of passion that was formed in Orchard Club over the past semester, myself and these other students. I actually, I remember the moment at one point realizing that this whole project had kind of surpassed me. The passion was, it was no longer my passion. It was, it was a collective passion of other individuals who, who wanted this as bad as I did, if not more. So we hit the ground running. Um, we put together Earth Week, which we celebrated a couple weeks ago. Um, special thanks to Professor Edder, Professor Norton, again Professor Kelly Gates, and Retree Us for all holding workshops for that week. Um, Earth Week was all about celebrating Mother Earth, um, celebrating Orchard Club's uh, mottos, which is sustainability, community, and legacy, and just really raising awareness on environmental practices. So that's a, I think that's another thing that's important to remember too, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of everything that's happened. You know, climate change is still happening, and we we need we need to take better care of this planet. We do, and it's the only way it's going to get done is if we do it. And that's what this that's what this orchard represents is us coming together and handling this situation and doing it together, doing it for each other, doing it for this planet that we all love so much, and ultimately doing it in the name of love and togetherness, unity. And here we are, May 3rd. The trees are in the ground. <laughs> Seeds have been planted. It's been a really long journey. And there's, you know, and even reading this list, there's so many other people that come up in the mind. And uh, I can't, I can't possibly name them all right now. And, it makes me so happy that in the midst of everything that has been the past year, just the, the enthusiasm that has gone into this project and the enthusiasm I see in everyone who's been involved in this project and who hears about it. And even just here today, everyone that's here today, you know, we're here to celebrate each other. We're here to celebrate our community. We're here to celebrate four seas, but ultimately to celebrate the planet. This planet gives us love. We have to give it love back. And that's what we're doing here today, planting this orchard. It's important to remember too that this isn't the end of something. And for me it is, you know, because I'm, I'm graduating in a couple weeks. So I am leaving this college. I'm gonna be leaving Orchard Club. I'm kind of leaving this whole thing behind, but this orchard is the beginning of something. This orchard's gonna be providing education for students for generations to come. You know, with the, with the science building growing, and the STEM project, the STEM, um, uh, just the whole science department growing in general. Um, this is an, we've literally just planted a resource, an educational resource. And as we go forward in combating climate change and trying to make the world a little better, now 4Cs has a place to come where we can run outdoor labs, we can have an outdoor workspace. On top of that, we now have food. We're producing our own food. We're teaching students and just members of our community how to interact with the earth, how to live off it. There's so many things I could say about this orchard. Um, this, this has been my sole existence for the past year. And to see it 
to see it in the ground and to be here with everyone who's helped make it possible. This is a really special day. This is really something special we did. And to my point, I get distracted. Um, although I'm leaving and although this is the end of something for me, what we did today is the beginning of something. And it's really important we remember that. And if we want this orchard to flourish, we have to give it love. And it's important that moving forward, all of us, we come out here, we check on it, we water it, we mulch it when needed, we just give it love. And if we love Mother Earth, she will love us back. So in closing, there is, there is one specific individual who deserves more credit than I'm going to be able to give her right now. And that is Professor Kelly Gates. Or I'm going to call her from this point on Swan. Mm -hmm. I met Swan two and a half years ago um, when I took an intro to philosophy class. Swan has been on this journey with me um, just being a student and the Orchard Project. This whole time I've been at Four Seas. I remember when I first asked Swan to get involved in this project, not only was she on board, she immediately started sending me like all these articles on how to like collect rainwater and how to recycle all these different things. I remember when I went to the, when I gave the presentation back in September of last year, she was in the room with me and she had my back. She was ready to go. She had things to say and she, Swan, you're, you're the main reason I decided to give college a real try. When I met you two and a half years ago, you were the first professor to really speak to me in a way that no one ever had. More, really one of the first people to ever speak to me in a way that no one had before. I'm so happy I met you. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And although I'm graduating and I'm leaving, this isn't goodbye. And uh, so, I have this to give to you today. Uh, half of Phi Theta Kappa. We have the soul of gratitude. We have some flowers. I actually have this uh, this photo of us that was taken right after we uh, left the presentation. Um, just to remember the beginning of this project. And I love you so much, Swan. <laughs> So now I'm going to hand it off to Professor um, Rebecca Griffin, the advisor for PTK who has some things she would like to say as well. Hi everybody, my name is Rebecca Griffin and I am the coordinator for PTK. I've been the coordinator for PTK for one year and this microphone is buzzing. Um, I'd like to thank you all for being here and I'd like to thank Ethan Hansen for all of his hard work and dedication this semester. This project received a number of awards from the PTK national um, or regional organization, uh, the New England organization. It re received third place for the Honors in Action project for our region and first place for its uh, topic, its specific to topic related to the built environment. Um, and so Ethan, I just received this award in the mail and I'd like I would like you to have this if you could come up and <laughs> this project has been an inspiration um, for my first year as PTK coordinator. 
Um, since we're all here in person, there's a couple of other people sort of related to PTK that I'd also like to thank. Um, and in terms of the orchard, <laughs> there's someone who actually was working behind the scenes with me all semester uh, as my first year, and that's Professor Kate Martin. Um, she was the PTK coordinator for 10 years before I arrived on the scene, and it was a big learning curve for me, and she's been here to answer all of my questions and to really help me through the, the first year of being PTK coordinator. So I'd like you to come up and receive a, a stole of gratitude as well. Thank you. I have gained special insight into what it's like to be PTK coordinator and just um, all the work that Kate's put in for the past 10 years is really um, just amazing and um, I don't know if she's received the recognition that maybe she de deserves for all of that so thank you so much Kate. Um, I also have one more award that's related to PTK that's usually given at our um, induction ceremony and that's the Golden Apple Excellence in Teaching Award. This is a, an award that is voted on by students and um, they, this teacher was an overwhelming favorite for this award. I'd like to have two students, Cassandra Robin and Taylor Walsh, come up to give this award. Professor Bancroft was one of my favorite professors from Cape Cod Community College. I was lucky enough to be one of our students. Professor Bancroft teaches different English classes. She's the kind of teacher who encourages her students to do their very best, no matter the challenging task. She is ex ex exceptional at explaining what she expects you to write for her assignments. In addition, she is very efficient with replying to emails if you have trouble submitting assignments. Professor Bancroft was a very, class was very organized and easy to follow on Moodle. Professor Bancroft is a wonderful English professor at Cape Cod Community College. As a professor for two of my English classes, Professor Bancroft teaches English Composition 1 and Critical Reading and Thinking. She's very dedicated and enthusiastic and motivates her students. She encourages students to be creative in writing assignments and to strive to do their best work. She reminds her students to use the Writing Center and Tutoring Center for feedback on writing assignments and papers. In addition, she shows support to clubs such as the Thai Theta Kappa Honor Society chapter at Cape Cod Community College. Congratulations, Professor Bancroft, on the PTK Golden Apple Award. This is well deserved. So real quickly before we close, um, the elections are in for um, the next semester for Orchard Club and I just want to take a minute to recognize um, those elected. First we have Savannah O'Brien, if you want to come up here.
who will be the new president uh, pretty much after today of Horsher Club. We also have Amber Olson, who is staying on as VP of Horsher Club. Finally, we have Max Kennedy, who is actually operating the camera right now, who is taking on, and uh, coming in as our new treasurer. Um, if anyone is interested, any other students who might be here, Orchard Club meets Mondays at 3.30 p.m. in San Diego Zoom Link. Come hang out with us. We're playing orchards. Um, so yeah, just one more time, I want to thank you all so much for coming out today. Uh, this has really been a really special day. Um, we ask that everyone can stick around for a couple minutes just to take some pictures. And uh, yeah, peace and love, everybody.